Hello, Ryan here, AK Mac, and welcome. On the most recent ATV, we were given a glimpse into the further advancements in the upcoming feature of player interactions. Now, these interactions are not just interacting with your ship or components, but for everything within the game world, be it personal weapons, your helmets and equipment, even objects like cups, dinner trays, and control panels. This is the third version of the player interaction. The first one we saw is that horrific CryEngine use uh, button which was just for everything. Uh, the second one is the item 2.0. It's a bit more accurate but still not 100% uh, perfect. The world is vast and full of immersive features so they wanted the players to have the ability to pick up and interact with all these objects. It's going to be involved in things like the shopping system uh, and even looting uh, pretty much everything within the game. Now how it works, they said that you'll be able to hold down the F key and then using your mouse, you'll be able to scroll an independent cursor which will highlight any interactable object like lockers, uh, items upon the table, or buttons in your cockpit. And then when you get close enough, uh, if you're not already, you'll then be given specific options related to the item. And then using the left mouse button, you will be able to trigger the interaction. The right click, they said, would be maybe for zooming in on an object to get a, a closer inspection of it. One of the examples we saw was they looked at a helmet on a table, they could pick it up, place it under his arm, look at the helmet under his arm and then choose again whether or not you want to equip it or place it back down again. Or even throw it, I think, was an option. But I do love the fact, uh, just breaking off from that, that helmets have physical mass. Rather than just being stuck in an unrealistic inventory, seeing the players actually carry their own helmets around a ship will be greatly immersive and, you know, running to pick one up when you start taking damage or if you need to EVA would be very cool. But there was an interesting Spectrum post which was a request to be able to toggle the highlight on and off uh, as I guess it would be quite immersive breaking so I must agree with that one. But anyway, they want to make sure that it all, it all works well for all situations be it in your cockpit or in a firefight. They want it to be user friendly too, not awfully fiddly when causing problems when you're in a pressured situation. Now this is the same system that the AI will use, uh, we'll, you'll see NPCs carrying trays and interacting with items just like players with, they'll have the same ability to do this. Uh, you're also going to be able to stow items uh, which will be based upon your clothing, uh, for example, if you were to stow the little radar that we saw, it would take up one of your inventory slots, which if you had a pair of cargo pants then that would probably be one pocket uh, used up, and if you have no spare pockets then you'd probably just have to carry it around in your hands, but they did say uh, that there's not going to be an inventory, it's going to have, they're going to have physical places on your body, so like pockets and, and attachments, rather than this silly inventory system you see in many games where you can just hold thousands of items. Now it will be possible to use this interaction system to look at other ships in the area and then perhaps choose one to find more information on or even communicate with that ship. There's a lot of flexibility and, uh, and I'll move on to what we saw in this video to show off some of the actual flexibility that there is there. So in terms of weapons, you can have your weapon interaction and they showed themselves removing a really cool looking suppressor and then one item called a grapple mag. Really great way of setting up your weapons for, for how you want them to be. We also saw them toggling the fire mode on the handgun and then firing it from this unusual angle. I'm not, I found that a little strange, I'm not sure if that's completely necessary or how it's going to be but it's still, you know, work in progress. But they was able to throw a weapon as well, which is very, very cool. I think uh, to be able to do this is useful if, you're, if your friend runs out of ammunition or doesn't have a weapon and you're both behind cover taking fire. You can then throw a weapon to him without leaving the cover and being safe. It's also good for choosing specific weapons. You can place them down, put them where you like on a table. Or if, say, if you've got all your weapons stowed in on a weapon rack, you can then look at which weapon you want for the particular mission you're going on and pick that one up rather than having to browse through all your inventory. Now in terms of ships, it's obviously the same system we have seen for the ship cockpit interactions and I have done a separate video on this so check the description below, I'll uh, put a link up there for you. But there's uh, individual panels and controls for buttons on your ships. I see this being a really interesting when you're interacting with various ship mechanics like for the reclaimer, so when you're salvaging or for the prospector and mining you can flick and toggle switches for different systems that you want on and off. Uh, I want to know what this cockpit is, I don't know what cockpit that's from, is it a ship that we haven't seen so far because I don't remember seeing that before. But in the Mustang Beta, this is a great ship is the Mustang Beta, it's like a little camper van. You can see them interacting with all the different compartments, it looks as though you can even lift up or lower the toilet seat. They showed off a very adolescent version of cargo interactions as well and what this was for was on board the Freelancer and using the cargo manifest terminal 
more to try and get it so that it recognizes when an item is within the ship as cargo and then display it. But then it became what we know as sort of MFDs or multifunction displays. And these are more user-friendly panels which have a bit more immersion with the game. We saw a, another brief look into one of the panels on, on the Caterpillar and how you can interact with the ship itself using this panel and he was opening and closing doors so you don't have to go up to the door itself to physically open and close them, you can do it from a control booth. Now in terms of FPS, they showed a little new FPS display which was, I think they class it as your inner thought and this gives access to either your Moby Glass, your inventory, weapons, uh, wingmen was an option, exit seat was an unusual option and emotes. Uh, which when they go through to emotes you can it's a much more useful way of picking which emote you want to use and i expect that we'll be able to set these up as we see fit uh, depending on what emote that you tend to use the most we also saw a very unusual sort of five beakers lined up and a bit of a larger receptacle where he was able to pour liquid uh, well a supposed liquid into each individual container um and you know picking up the glass putting it on a tray these are kind of useless interactions, but highly immersive, especially for those into the role-playing, and it just kind of shows the scope of what they're able to do with the system, as well as the level of detail they're going to to create this game into the most immersive game you'll probably ever see for a lot of years. Now, we saw a prototype on a terminal which looked like a mining console. Um, one of the options was install a, a surveillance bug, flush the log file was another one, and download schematics. Now, these have no relevance right now, but it is probably an interaction that we'll get to do in Squadron 42, so we'll keep an eye on that one. And from there, we had like a radar and battery scene again. We've seen this before, where you're able to take the battery out of a radar, small handheld radar, and then place a new battery in. And it's very useful, they say, for smuggling small items instead of placing the battery in. You can put maybe contraband in there, small diamonds or whatever, you know, that you've, you've stolen trying to smuggle through the borders. But this radar looks like a player detection radar. A bit like what we saw in the Alien films, and it'll be really cool exploring a, a derelict ship, checking for survivors or even other life forms that are on board. Also, what's cool about this radar is it shows that you can interact with items upon a table rather than having to just pick them up first. You can actually just switch them on and off from the table, so that's quite handy. But we saw some light switches with a, a rotating the dimmer switch. There was toggling, which looked like a fuse-style box. All of these are quite bespoke and tailor-made interactions, not just the simple on-off option. Very nice. We saw him throwing a helmet again. Very cool. Going back to the weapons, you can throw items to people. Plus the ability to input codes directly using a control panel. And I can just imagine being chased down by whatever. Um, you get to the door and your friends are trying to hold off maybe aliens and you're trying to put this code in as calmly as possible. It's going to be very cool. But all these uh, interactions are diegetic. They can, you can do them at runtime. It isn't just a case of pausing the game and getting you to fiddle around with them. Anyway, this, the whole interaction system is very unique and being able to do this and manipulate the items in great depth will open up enormous amounts of gameplay opportunities. They have said that it feels good and they will also give the option of a sort of a speedier version. For example, having like a flight ready mode rather than each switch individually. So hopefully all will work well. I really cannot wait till we can get our hands on this. I agree with that Spectrum post. Toggling whether we, we want the highlight on or off is important. I don't want the whole environment to be flashing yellow and breaking the immersion. Anyway, let me know your thoughts, guys. This system is, is going to be uh, useful throughout the game. It's not just a simple, small system. It's going to take a lot of work and a lot of balancing that we will help with. Don't forget to comment on any video of mine throughout the month of May to win a Star Citizen starter package courtesy of my patrons. Also, you must be an active subscriber. Follow me on Twitch, Twitter and Instagram, hit that like button and I shall see you next time.